to the High Speed Rail America Club show. That is a mouthful of a title, so hopefully by the next episode we'll come up with a better title that you can tell your friends about it instead of talking this long title. So in this first episode we're going to talk about what exactly is High Speed Rail. Well, we're going to tell you, explain to you the different types of High Speed Rail. There are three types we're going to go over right now. So let's see if this thing will actually go. It actually work out the first try. Alright, so the types of High Speed Rail. Let's go to the first one, which is called the Bullet Train. Or in Japan, it'll be called the Shin Kan Sen. And I think my Japanese is correct. The Shin Kan Sen. Which pretty much means new route trail or something. I'll probably say it in the video exactly what it exactly means in kanji or Japanese. But anyway, the bullet train Shinkansen system was first introduced in 1964. And today they usually have an average speed of 140 miles an hour. Top speed is 200 miles an hour, and their cost is the cheapest out of the three systems. They cost a couple billions, several billions to actually make. Now, these trains run on electricity, all three of them run on electricity, so they're safe for the environment, they don't kill any trees, well, except for the trees you have to cut through, but you still, it's still environmentally safe. Now, we go on to the third, the second type, which is the maglev. The maglev was introduced in Germany in 1979. These go a lot faster than their electric counterparts. While the electric bullet train runs on rail, the maglev system actually runs pretty much on thin air. I'm not joking. These trains are actually magnetically levitated so that there is no resistance between the rails and the trains. And once electricity flows through them, the train moves forward. Given that, they have a higher top speed, an average speed, and a top speed. However, given with the higher speed, there's a more cost. So there's many more billions of dollars is the cost for a maglev system. Now, the third type of high-speed rail system we're going to go over is the famous Hyperloop. Proposed by Mr. Elon Musk, he said that this train, or well, it's not really a train, it's actually a train in a tube which we will call rail, because it is high speed, and it's rail, so that would work. Average speed should go about 598 miles an hour, and top speed is 760 miles an hour. Give it, that's ridiculously fast, that's even faster than actual planes. But do we know the cost? We not, we're not quite sure. And the date is when it was made is not quite yet. We don't actually have a certain date, or reality of when the Hyperloop will actually work. It, given it's still in the process of actually being in development and it's pretty much in the cloud of thinking right now. But can it actually work? That's something we'll have to figure out later. But as of right now, it's something that doesn't exist. As of what we have with here, the maglev and the bullet train, these actually exist in high-speed rail. So Alex here, he's the VP a High Speed Rail America Club. Say hello, Alex. Hi. Okay, so Alex and I, we've been getting a lot of questions from other people on the streets and in FIU asking certain questions like... How does a bullet train work in comparison to a conventional train? Well, Alex, here's how bullet trains actually work. High speed trains contain many unique features that distinguish them from standard passenger trains. The most important and most noticeable of these features is the design of it. They are designed with a much more sleek shape. Oh yeah, that, that's to make them look good. Well, no. That is so that they could perform much faster. They can run faster, accelerate and decelerate more rapidly. Another design feature is that the wheels are shaped and built so that they could perform like a high speed train should. Another significant difference that I notice within the system is the way the stations are distributed. Um, regular intercity passenger service, such as Amtrak, has a certain arrangement of stations that could be close or far from another city. Now, high speed trains are much more spaced out so that passengers can experience direct travel and minimal delays, and that's one of the most important conveniences of high speed travel. What makes the Hyperloop? different from the bullet train and the maglev. Remember, the Hyperloop is just theoretical science as it stands right now. So it's not in reality that it's something we can use. It can go in and actually take it right now. What the Hyperloop is, there's no 
it works in a contained cylinder. As comparison to the maglev and the bullet train, they run, they have to run and cross through air, so they have to be aerodynamic. However, given the Hyperloop, it doesn't have to be aerodynamic because it's in a contained system that doesn't have any air. It's running in a tube. Pretty much what it does is these people sit down inside this little contraption here, and this this one, this is the thing that moves. The Hyperloop works similar to a maglev, given that there's magnets moving and pushing it along. Just like that, if my physics is still correct. And since there's no, there's no air inside here, the air is outside, the Hyperloop runs with no exact air resistance and it can reach these ridiculously top speeds of 760 miles an hour. Still, it's theoretical science, we are not to the point yet that we can say the Hyperloop actually works. However, you can see real examples of how it actually would work if you were to look at an office building. Some of these office buildings have little tube systems where you actually send off letters into them. So that's the sort of system that Elon Musk was thinking. And it's also been proposed as well of different types of cylinder suction systems. Thank you so much for watching this first episode of our series.